This is right off from the Raider Tape Blog, coming at you another edition of MLB Observations of the Offseason for Hot Stove, uh, ending of the 2023 season into this year's 2024 season, week number six. Let's start with this. Anthony Benboom, backup catcher, and Brandon and Brandon Hanefee signed a minor deal with the Tigers. Felix Pena is staying in the KBO. Dalton Jeffries and Yoshitsugo. I know I'm... Personally, Yoshitsugo, he's a corner infielder, outfielder who's got a good bat, but there's not a spot for him, so he's more like a DH. Going to the Giants, like, you know, he can maybe, if there's injuries, get some at-bats at first base or DH going forward. I don't know about Dalton Jeffrey making team. Junior Fernandez is going to Japan, so is Miguel Yajori. Brett D. Gauss on a mind deal with the Mariners. And Edwin Yusita is going to the Rays. Colin Snyder's been DFA'd. Ronnie Dawson is staying in the KBO. Jesus Tincono is going to the Rangers. Ryan Bain is going to the Mets. Vitor Gonzalez and Jorvet Vivas have been traded to the Yankees for minor leaguer Trey Sweeney. There was a report saying the Dodgers don't have any room on the roster for the signings of Joe Kelly and Shohei Otani, so they need to clear roster spots, and they're going to be tra- getting rid of two guys. Vitor Gonzalez has been in the big leagues. Along with this other guy is going to the Yankees just for roster spot wise. Ryan Ryder Ryan, not Ryan Ryder. Confusing. He's going to Pittsburgh Pirates minor league deal. Ben Lively's going to Cleveland on a minor league deal. William Cuevas is staying in the KBO. Peyton Henry's going to Blue Jays on a minor league deal. Rob Zesterniski, I really can't remember the name, but again, end of the alphabet. He's going to the Brewers. I can see him pitching out of bullpen this year. Dylan Floros on a major league deal with the National. I can see him being flipped at the deadline. Eddie Rodriguez of the Pirates having UCL surgery to be out for the season. So they're going to be missing a key guy. Cooper Criswell, who I'd never heard of, signed a major deal with the Red Sox. Maybe their scouts know that he's good. White Sox and DFA, Yohan Ramirez. The Braves, who, remember, they traded they traded for Jared Kalenic and Evan White and Gonzalez and just shipped Gonzalez to the Pirates for money. Well, they just traded Evan White and this Tyler Thomas guy to the Angels for Max Stassi and David Fletcher. Well, David Fletcher, who I talked about on my podcast a few days ago, saying that's a good move. He is a natural-born middle infielder. He plays third base. He can play first base. That'd be a good utility guy. Well, the Braves said, you know what? We're going to outright you because we don't want you to pay for your money on the 40-man roster because, like Evan White, they're making a lot of money and they're not useful. But then the Braves said, well, we got Max Stassi, but we don't want him either because we have Darno as a backup who's made an all-star team. We got Murphy as one of the best catchers. So they just flipped Stassi to the White Sox for money. They're just, like, moving bodies around. I have no idea what's going on there. White Sox perspective is because Grandal's a free agent. They got rid of Zevi Zavala during the end of the season, and they finally gave Corey Lee an opportunity because Carlos Perez, like his brother, they're the first three backups. Like they're not literally good. So Stassi at one point had a good offensive, had a two good years where he's good offensively. He's always been a good offensive catcher, but injuries and he hasn't played up to what he's supposed to be. And he missed most of the season this year. So the White Sox are hoping that if he's better defensively than Grandal and Corey Lee. And he and Corey Lee can be okay offensively. That's fine. The Sox shouldn't have to expect that they pay a lot of money for a catcher to be the huge part of their lineup because they needed a lefty with Gradal and it didn't work out. That you can have Stassi or Corey Lee just bat at the bottom and that's all you need. Andrew Stevenson, the backup outfielder from the former Nationals player and the Twins, he's going to Japan. Daniel Castano is going to the KBO. Trace Thompson, former Mets, Dodger, etc. Backup outfielder signed my deal with the Mets. The Mets had a lot of injury last year, so I could see him getting some at bats. Wes Benjamin is staying in the KBO. Taylor Clark's going to the Brewers. Cam Robinson's going to the Mets. Tyler O'Neill, big trade happened after the after the video last week was recorded. He is going to the Red Sox for Nick Robinson and Victor Santo. With Verdugo traded out, the hopefully the Red Sox, between Rafaela and these other guys they have on the roster, they compete for one outfield spot. Let Jaron Duran get a full opportunity to play center field every day because he's the best guy in center field. And you let Tyler O'Neill play left field every day. And Yoshida play DH because Turner's gone. Like, that should be it. Like, let's just do Let this guy DH. Let Tyler O'Neill play the outfield with the young guys. And then that would be as Tyler O'Neill's a much better offensive player than Verdugo. And I, yeah, he's won a gold glove. But, like, Tyler O'Neill may help in the middle of the lineup because Duval's a free agent. So they kind of need someone in the outfield. So it's an interesting move. The Cardinals have been trying to trade this guy for a while because the Cardinals MO is we keep developing all these outfielders. So that's why, like, Dylan Carlson can go. That's why they traded Harrison Beto. Like, you just get rid of everyone. That's what they've been doing. Andrew Chafin's going to Detroit for the second stint. And again, if the Tigers aren't a playoff team, I can see this the lefty guy setup man being traded at the deadline. Will Smith cashed in with the Royals on a, on a one-year deal. 
just winning all these World Series. And again, if the Royals don't make the playoffs, Will Smith could definitely be traded to help another team maybe win a World Series. Cleveland has signed Austin Hedges, who they used to have a while ago, but he was just like on Pittsburgh and then Texas and all this other stuff. He's going there to be the backup catcher to Bo Naylor. But they had already got Christian Bethencourt from, like, Tampa Bay, which I never saw why Tampa Bay got rid of him in the first place. But at least now he's going to go to Miami without Jacob Stallings. He's going to get plenty of at-bats to play, to be a catcher with the Fortes guy. Braves announced that Mattis Yapo, who was filling in a lot of times for Ron Washington this year, like when I went to Atlanta specifically, he's taking over the third base gig, officially leaving AAA. Tom Goodwin is going to be the first base coach. Former Major League outfielder, former Major Leaguer, and the father of Brian Goodwin, another Major League Baseball player. While Eric Abreu is going to be the bullpen coach. And Walt White is adding infield coach to his responsibility. Dean Kiefer is now the assistant pitching coach in St. Louis. They recently announced their whole staff. More on that. Ryan Marusio, who is competing for third base with BD and Vientos for the Mets towards ACL. So he's in, like, playing in like the winter ball like, era time, you know. He's probably going to be out for the whole year, so that affects the Mets' plans. Royals spent a lot of money on Seth Lugo, a three-year, $45 million deal for a guy who finally got a chance to start for a full season and wasn't always hurt like he was with the Mets because they used him as a reliever. The Royals gave him all this money. I'm like, that's a lot. Then they gave Chris Stratton, the swing reliever starter, a two-year, $8 million deal. And this is after I said they just signed like Will Smith. So they're like really flexing their money. Roddy Telez is going to Pittsburgh who, you know, ha- needs like an everyday first baseman. DH gets a $3.2 million deal, which means I hope the Pirates are playing the White Sox this year. If not, Pittsburgh's on my list, and I hope he's on the roster by the time I go to Pittsburgh this upcoming season so I can talk to him again. But, again, he could be flipped at the deadline because the Pirates are on a playoff team. And the biggest news was that Shohei Otani signed a 10-year, $700 million deal where, like they say, some point sixty eight million million are deferring. They broke, like, the record for most, like, jersey sales, like, in 48 hours with that. Again, he's going from small-time Anaheim, L.A., to actual Los Angeles. So, I didn't think he wanted to go to the big-time media, but here's the thing. I kept saying this. The Dodgers, the Dodgers, the Dodgers. You get yourself Shohei Otani for all that money, right? But I don't know if I said it here on my podcast. What pitching do you have? Kershaw's going to miss the first half of the season. Bueller didn't pitch a single inning this year because he was coming off surgery. And May and Gosselin, the other two key pitchers, they never stay healthy for a full season. They're either missing a season or missing chunks of it. So those are your four pitchers. And Uri Urias is probably never coming back with a domestic violence case. That's a one through five rotation. I don't care about Bobby Miller and all these young guys. Otani is going to be in his mid-30s in a couple of years. And he's not even going to pitch till 2025 at some point. So you're paying all this money for a guy who's going to DH and not play the outfield. Like, this dude's had multiple Tommy John surgeries. It's a lot of money for a guy in his 30s who, yes, he can pitch and hit, but he's not going to pitch. If he's not going to pitch, why would you do that? Like, it just makes absolutely no sense to give him all that money. And apparently, the Angels never really offered a, a counter offer. That the Blue Jays were used as a rope and dope, like, oh, yeah, he's going to go to Toronto and play in, in Canada. So that's why the Dodgers somehow got all that money. I don't get it. They're not going to win unless they get more than one starting pitcher to pitch this year that isn't Bobby Miller and Clayton Kershaw and all these other guys coming off injury because their bullpen's not that great. Like, it just. Again, we know the Dodgers, the Yankees, the Red Sox, the Angels, sometimes the Padres and the Mets over the year. They can spend all this money, but like, who else would have spent all this money besides the Dodgers? Because they spent all this money on Freeman, and they re-signed Muncie, and they got Mookie Betts, and they just brought back Jason Hayward. So they got all this money invested in this team. And this Jung-Hoo Lee, this guy from Japan, or his Korea, signed with the Giants for six years at $113 million. They're hoping that this foreign import could play center field every day because I like Mike Eskremski, but... He's a much better option than D.H. Austin Slater. Conforto and Mitch Haniger played center field in the early days with their team. Like, and they played infielders in center field, this team. So the best thing is, this guy plays center field. You're paying him all this money. You're paying Mitch Haniger all this money. And you're paying Michael Conforto all this money. It would be a very, very expensive outfield. And question marks throughout the whole entire infield with Brandon Crawford finally gone, you know, because he's a free agent and they didn't want to resign him. So, like, 
I don't know who's the starting infield for the Giants, nor I want to know who the starting catcher is. You know, their pitcher is always to scrape these guys together, but I hope that works out. That's a lot of years for a, an import. Hopefully, he has some impact on them in center field. Julio Orias, speaking of him, they announced that his case is going to be reviewed with the District Attorney of LA. Even if it's figured out, we know how Trevor Bauer got a two year suspension. He's overseas. Another guy who pitched for the Dodgers. Daniel Hudson, speaking of the Dodgers, has re signed a minor league deal. This dude never stays healthy, but when he does, he's pretty good. Jorge Fowler signed a minor league deal with the Cubs. Cubs still, I think, have Jan Gomes, and they have the young guy, Amaya, right? So he's a third stringer on that team. Roberto Perez is going to the Red Sox, who have Reese McGuire and the Wong guy. Obviously, I love Reese McGuire personally, and I think Wong, you know, with Wong and stuff, they're good backups. But again, Roberto Perez is is a backup catcher, and again, he has been healthy in a few years. Every time he's had to deal with the Pirates together, he's had to deal with the Giants, he got hurt. So the Red Sox are hoping that he's healthy. He can at least be a stable force at the, for the pitching staff. Nationals, who signed Nick Senzel last week, I said to myself, please, 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 do not play this guy in the outfield. They're like, he's going to play third base every day. I'm like, thank you. His stock as a, as a prospect and a rookie went downhill. I don't know what happened to my signed Nick Senzel card. I'm really pissed that I don't have it anymore. But if he plays infield, that will keep him healthier than out, running out there playing center field. Also, don't bat him in the middle lineup. Like, again, yeah, so I'm happy for him. Penguins and Pirates did announce they're doing a joint ownership of Sportsnet Pittsburgh. That makes sense. They're two of the three teams in Pittsburgh. White, uh, former White Sox holder Liam Hendricks announced that he's going to be coming back from Tommy John's surgery around the deadline. So it could be a huge boost to pick this guy up. They announced that in spring training, there's going to be a showcase of the top prospects to play in, which would be cool. Austin wins signed with the deal with the Reds. And again, they like going with Kirk Casale and like, and you know, Tyler, like, uh, like these backup catchers like Kirk Casale and whatnot over these years. Tyler Malley, maybe, I don't know. It's Kirk Casale and a few other backup catchers on this team. And so, signing Austin Wins, who the backup catcher is, just continue the Reds thing of having, like, three backup catchers at a time. Dwayne Underwood signed my deal with the Yankees. I can see the Yankees with a lot of trades they're making and not having a lot of money. Having Dwayne Underwood make the team because he's been around the block. Freddie Pacheco and Trey Wingenner are going to minor deals with the Tiger. Cleveland, and with all the moves they made recently, decided to DFA Afonso Rivas. Rangers announced Mad Max is having back surgery. So, again, they're, they're on the hook for his money. They're on the hook for, uh, you know, DeGrom's money. So, you know, whatever. Michael Walker gave the Royals giving out money. They gave him $32 million. Between him and Seth Lugo, all the money they're giving, they're really hoping in Chris Stratton and Will Smith that it works out for them in their playoff team. Because they just gave Hunter Redford, one of my favorite players, a two-year $13 million deal. problem with the Royals is they have a bunch of outfielders. Some can hit, some can field. They were play, they're playing Melendez in the outfield. He's a catcher. They're playing uh, Nick Prado in the outfield, and he's a first baseman. Like, hopefully with Hunter Renfro, he plays one corner spot, and Melendez will play the other, and then they just got to figure out center field. Because he's a good bat. He has, like, 20, 30 home runs a year, drives in 80 to, set, to 90 RBI. Tigers have picked up Jack Flaherty on a one-year $14 million deal. I don't know why he's going to Detroit, but that helps Detroit out because if they're not a playoff team and Flaherty's healthy... For a, Cy, for a Cy Young candidate, which he used to be back in the day when he was healthy and was an all-star, flip up the deadline. The Yankees have traded Billy McKinney to the Pirates for pool money because they need his roster spots. Tyler Miley's going to Texas on a two-year $22 million deal. The dude missed the whole entire season. He's a back-end pitcher from the Reds, and when the Twins gave a prospect for him, I said, what are you doing? This guy's not a front-line starter. But Texas knows that with Montgomery being a free agent, and they lost Stratton and Will Smith as relievers, that, like... They need to, because I don't know, with Matt Max with back surgery, DeGrom coming off his injury, Oda Rizzi coming off his injury, if he's still on the roster, that Malley will be a body to be in the back of the rotation. So, I don't know, but $22 million is a lot. Other big news of, of like actual moves before I get to like retirements and deaths and other stuff is Tyler Glasnow, who I kept complaining to the Dodgers, you don't have pitching. They trade for Tyler Glass now, who every year could win a Cy Young. Every year he's an all he could be an all-star. But the dude either has chunks the season he missed, has surgery and misses most of the season, or comes back later in the season or whatever. With Manuel Margot for Ryan Pipiot and John DeLuca. I feel like the Dodgers won this trade because Ryan Pipiot has pitched this year, and they're like, you know, maybe we don't want to go with an all-young rotation with Bobby Miller. And Johnny DeLuca is a is a young alpha there, but again, you know. The center fielder that they had this year was one of the top rookies, you know. And they and they signed Jason Hayward to play right field, and they got utility guys like Chris Taylor who played the outfield. But 
getting Mamo Margot, they get another body who can play the all three outfield spots, steal some bases. So it just makes them a little stronger, and they just gave up two young guys to get two veterans. Oh, James Outman's the center fielder, yeah. Tyler Glass now immediately, because of Kershaw's injury, Bueller's injury, May Goslin's injury, and Urias' domestic violence... It literally puts him at the number one spot in the rotation, followed by Bobby Miller and swing guy Chirino. That's still not scary, but at least the Dodgers listened to me and got themselves a frontline starting pitcher, if healthy. But then he got extended for four years after his deal ends for $110 million. So at least they're like, we want to keep this guy and we want him around because Tampa Bay, I don't know what they're doing. They have traded away pretty much like all their good starting pitchers, and I, I, I don't understand it. Now then... Happy trails to Tommy Hunter, the former Mets, Ranger, Oriole, Cub, and uh, Rays and Phillies reliever, one-time starter with the Rangers and the Orioles, was a gold medalist in the World University Championship in 2006, representing men's baseball. He finished with a 56-47 win-loss record, 406 ERA, and 637 strikeouts. At one point, I was like, this guy's a pretty good starter, and then he became like a setup man and closed some games out, but 37, he's like, you know, I've been playing... Since 2008, I've been around the block as a starting reliever. It's time to go. So, you know what? I still think that somebody could have signed this guy to a veteran contract. Maybe he didn't want that, and he could have helped out a team in the playoff. Stephen Brault announced his retirement after switching from pitcher to uh, reliever. I mean, from reliever, I mean, starting pitcher to position player when he played in independent Atlantic League. So he's like, yeah, I've been a pitcher, and I was a position player, and 30. 31 is still pretty young. That's how old I'm going to be. And I think that's pretty young when athletes retire. I think it's old just personally. But he finished with a 12-18 and 18 lifetime record, a 473 array, and a 299 strikeouts. A former Pirates and Cubs pitcher. Has a lot of other ventures that he can go into right now because he's been at the Pittsburgh Sympathy Orchestra. He's on the National Anthem in the minor leagues and the major league. He had a Broadway album he recorded. And then... He did, like, a lead vocals on a 12-song album. He appeared. He was a company on albums by some drummer named Vinny Catula and Kenny Arroff. Bassist Le- Leland Scar, guitarist Tom Pierce, keyboardist Jeff Basco, Adam Pascal. And Pirates player that used to play with teammate Josh Bell was on his album. He then also, his album was produced by Latin Grammy-nominated producer Lauren Harriet, who, was pro- who produced two of Bernie Williams' albums. So he's got music to go on. He has a podcast with another former teammate in Trevor Williams. So we got a lot of things to do. So that's why it's like always been like, you know what? If it's not your major thing that you're going to do in your life, then it's not a big deal. And so there's that. Yeah, so the Cardinals announced their full coaching staff under Oliver Marble. We mentioned Daniel Descalso as the bench coach. Turner Ward and Brandon Allen are staying as the hitting coaches. Dusty Blake is the pitching coach, but we mentioned Dean Kiefer as the assistant pitching coach, Julio Rango is assistant, and then organizational, you know, key pieces like Pop Warner, Stubby Clapper staying, Willie McGee is staying, this Klinger Terran is one of the bullpen catchers, and Jamie Powell gives an assistant bullpen coach, and DC McCallie is going to be the coordinator, and Pat- Packy Elkins is the game planning coach. Lastly, rest in peace to Tim, uh, Ken McKenzie, the former Brave Met Cardinal Giant and Astros pitcher with an 8-10 record, a lifetime with 4-8 ERA and 142 strikeouts. When he retired from baseball, he coached baseball and hockey at Yale. He passed away at 89. Rest in peace to Ken McKenzie. Thanks for listening to week 6 of the 2023 offseason going into this year's 24 season. A hot stove edition of observations and all the news going on. This was week 6 for MLB. From the Red Table, I'm Radar. See you guys next time.